morning everyone and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Now I am going to get on to doing the platform at some point in the near future but just fancied doing something a little bit different so I fancied having a go at making the bridge. So I am going to go for um, a Monet style bridge. I don't know whether you've looked at any Monet's paintings but they do need to be modified because the structure of those bridges don't seem to be particularly sound. So I've made a template which is this. Now the top obviously isn't cut but what it's representing the bottom part of it is representing the arch that will go at the bottom and the top part would represent the wall the actual walking surface so the top of it is actually much flatter so I'm going to go and start drawing up some ideas for the actual structure of the bridge. Now, looking at that and looking at that you might say actually John they don't look anything like well I went back to Monet's bridge and I thought well it would look very different if I had that flat top so I've gone back to having a very rounded type bridge but it still needs some structure underneath so what I'm going to do is build a bottom structure and build four of them have the bridge 30 mil wide and I've one at the edges, pretty much either side, and then two in the middle. So if you do look down, hopefully you can see the structure of the bridge underneath. Then I'm going to plank it using matchsticks and then build the railings up at the top. Now, I have got a range of different um, sections of plastic card, so I'll try that. Now, sticking with my former, um, I've now got to make... A piece that goes on the bottom in fact that's lost its shape slightly anyway what you do is you just put your thing between your fingers like that and literally just pull at a slight angle and then keep coming back to check it that's not enough i need a bit more there and a bit more there now the only thing with this stuff is that it's it just takes a little bit of time to work it round you've got to get it right Right, there we go. You can see I've got the two pieces done and there's two more just there for the other side. I might just go for two pieces. Don't know at the moment. But. Now, what I'm going to do is I've decided that I'm going to have the railings come up 15 mil above the bridge and 10 mil from the top of there to the bottom of there. So 25 in total. Marking on the 10 millimeter mark, which is there, I'm cutting just there. And snip, like so. And then I'm going to use the Revel contactor, which loads of other glues are available. I am certain of that. And a bit there and a bit there. like that and get these straight so what I'm doing now is I'm looking to see if these two pieces are parallel to each other I've marked on 20 millimeter intervals which has given me four railings going down each side so as you've seen I've just put some more uh, glue onto the railing like that now just trying to get that parallel. Yeah, that's about right. Right, before this goes off really solid, um, I've put the four corners on and I'm going to fit this piece in there now with the square up against the edge. So I think it would just be a good thing to do to get it absolutely spot on square. I want it that way around so that the, the pieces are on the the railings are on the outside so that's going to slot uh, it's going to sit on top of that one and that one right there it is so far now next job is to put railings on and I'm going to use strips of plastic card for that. Right, there's the strips cut, and they're probably um, nearer two mil than they are three. I didn't realize what I was saying there for a minute. Three mil would be nearly nine inches, wouldn't it? So that'd be 
well <laughs> now the next thing i'm going to do is obviously glue them on but um it's a perfect opportunity now to check the heights of these so i run the fingers up up there just in the same way as i showed you before to make the curves on this uh, but put that on the outside edge like that and just check the heights and if there's any particular uh, posts which are a little bit high then you can just adjust them right that's it so far now what i did i've i sprayed it with the gray and then i just come back out with the white primer and i held the primer probably around about 18 inches away and literally just blew a dust what i've done now is i've taken some matchsticks and if you remember like i did before where i then slice them down the middle so i'm going to put each one across like that to match up with the outside of this this rail here mark on where that comes to with the ruler or with the pencil even slice it off like so and then small dob of glue which i'm going to put on the end of this piece here it's perhaps not quite as much as that and then using the tweezers place that on okay now i am going to go around all of these in turn one at a time right so as you can see there the bridge is finished and I'm quite pleased with it. It's not perfect, but it's it'll be all right for what I want. Now, the the woodwork is a little bit on the rough side, but to be honest with you, I don't want to portray a new bridge. I want to portray a bridge that's sort of had a bit of weathering going on to it. And it's a few years old, not dilapidated like the station, but nevertheless starting to show a little bit of its age. So the, the effect on the woodwork, wood, wood swells up when it gets wet, doesn't it? like that and then going back in with the gray which I've got in the pot just streak a little bit of that bit more do much I'm literally just going to stroke stroke it up through the middle and I'll spread it in a second over this side I hope you can see what I'm doing now right there's the view now, I have to say, I know you can still see the buffer stop, but I have got the light on. I don't like it like that um, because it's still not very clear. Because it's dark, it blends into the background. I'll turn the light off. Hopefully you can see what I mean. You only see it because of the um, actual tread going across. The, the bridge itself so i'm going to paint it red oh, there's that bridge done now uh i think it does look better red and it just gives the impression we well, i can see it better that's what i'm trying to say and um just take you a bit closer um two people there looks as if they've had oh one's tilting over the lady's sort of limboing back a bit but uh, they look as if they've had a bit of a tiff these two She's standing there in a bit of a surprise and he's seemingly storming off for some reason or another, I don't know. Um, but I've also gone ahead and painted the bit of the back scene there to give the impression that the path carries on slightly around a corner, if you like, along with the hedge. All right. Now, do bear in mind, you do that as a triangle shape. As things go further into the distance, they become more triangular and get narrower the further away you go. Now, I've, it's easier to go off to one side and give the impression it's going around a corner. So the hedge would come down in perspective terms. It wouldn't, the height in terms of distance would get less. But because this hedge here is still full height, that one would remain higher. So you end up with this slope down and a slope up for the hedge. And you can just paint the ground a similar colour to what's already out there. Anyway, moving on to this area here now, 
um, I've got a footbridge that needs to be made. Now, I'm not going to go through literally step by step how to put the footbridge together. But if you notice, this platform is very narrow um, because it wasn't originally going to have a platform there. If you remember this layout and uh, uh, a lot of people just thought it would be a good idea. And I think it's a good idea, uh, but it does mean that the steps do have to be fairly narrow. So this is just wide enough to get a person past, but it will probably be like a single person step coming down. So it won't be very wide at all. All right, so I'm gonna start making that and I'll show you the odd little bit here and there. All right, right this is the um, plat footbridge kit that I'm going for. If I can just show you, zoom you in there. So because it's all brown and, um, well, woody looking, it, uh, I think will be quite nice to make that look rusted. I mean, well, I don't think it'd be that difficult, but uh, we're making one of the steps um, a little bit narrower than it than it would normally be, uh, as I've just explained. So I'm going to make a start on this, and um, I'll show you shortly. Those um, tower pieces, and I've got one more to do. But taking you across, I've got there's the pieces there, and the other one, the other vertical. Now, what I said was on this side of the bridge, I'm going to have to make it really narrow. OK, so if I show you the picture here of the tower, that distance there is this here. And they would go in there like that and the other one in there like that. But that is too wide for what I want. So what I'm going to do is leave the slots that side, but cut this down to a width I feel I can cope with, and then remove the bottom portion here and here and glue that on directly onto the surface, which will then give the illusion it's then packed or mounted inside the plinth. Right, so you can see I've now uh, mounted this up here. So you've got one half of it and I've also cut that bit so I've cut the bottom off and the top and that's going to be mounted in there okay to make the whole post seem a bit narrower so it will cope with the narrower steps right so I'm going to glue that in and um, I'll show you the next bit right, shortly. So just thought I'd show you the progress so far so you can see clearly now the narrow steps that will be coming down here and how wide they will be uh, but also we've got full width steps on this side obviously with the one railing now this bit across the middle it didn't have that blanking plate and the reason for that is because the footbridge although it's the full width as it came as part of the kit I've removed this portion here so if you can see it's it was this width but I've cut it down from there okay cut that piece out so that meant that I would end up with a gap um, in the railing so I've had to I've just centered it and put the five pieces either side and then put that piece in the middle which I think will will be a nice compromise there all right so there's the first look of the footbridge let's just take you around to the other side now you might be saying to me why did I choose that one well because this is an old abandoned um, forgotten type station that's an old abandoned type footbridge and um, I thought that would look really good when it's all rusted up and I can put some um, danger sign over there and a chain across it or whatever whatever you know all right then so the bridge has been sprayed as you can see and I've also given it a couple of coats of matte varnish to help seal it up now so I've just mixed up some um, raw umber, obviously got some very acid looking yellow is what I've got, um, some pale grey and some, I think that's skin colour. So dry brush over the top. Now I'm quite aware it's quite woody looking there, so the paint will help fill up those gaps. Right, hopefully you can start to see what I'm doing with this now. So I'm just going to use some more white and literally just streak it on. And it is very much a case of streaking on just different areas. Um, I am going to use a lot more white 
because it would indicate um, a bit more of a chemical reaction, which effectively what rust is really, isn't it? Okay, it's a bit more just on this side. Got some coming down that pillar there because that's going to be quite visible. Right, welcome back. We are going to now start um, painting on the details. So I'm going to turn these parts here into concrete. And also these need to be um, blackened up. The underside needs to be darkened up from smoke. And we need to do some slight um, effects down the side here and that sort of thing. So I'm going to, oh, this, the actual uh, bed for the walkway as well, that needs to be done. So that's my first step, the bed for the walkway and also these concrete plinths. I've got some of the natural grey from the um, this collection. I'm not going to do all of this on cam, but you can get the idea. Right, I haven't gone all the way round, but I thought before I go too far and before the paint dries, I'll show you what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take in some of that sort of olive green colour and hopefully you can make this out, but sort of paint it towards the edges of each step. Like so, all the way up. In fact, you could just do something like that. Because this is giving the impression of the old wood. And now the dark grey, which is the anthracite that I've got. And I'm going to put the anthracite right at the very edges. Let's get some of the actual colour. Right, so there's the finished footbridge. Now, what I was saying is, as you can see down here, I've got the grey gone over with the sort of olive green and brown and then the grey, the darker grey going down the outside to indicate muck. And over the top as well, again, the darker bits towards the edges, but it's all varied and it's definitely not all one colour, as I keep saying. All right. So the next time you see that will be on the layout. There we are, that's the footbridge in place, and that's the start of the really abandoned platform. So there'll be lots of grasses and weeds and all sorts growing around here, and I'll put a whole load around the bottom of it there. There will be, um, hopefully if I can find one, a chain with uh, no entry on the front of that, and um, all sorts. Now just taking you down to the bridge down there, I don't know whether I, can't remember whether I showed you that or not but uh, still need to do the back scene at the back there. That, that one at the back, but you've seen the one at the side. So I'm really quite pleased with that now. All right, I know you can still see the foam block, but it's never gonna be eliminated, but hopefully uh, this will detract the eye um, sufficiently, but I will see what I can do with that block. Um, I might be able to take it back a bit or I'll have a think about it. I'm, I'm contemplating putting a couple of lines on it to indicate the track, but uh, I'll have a think. There's possibly ways around it and things I can do. But anyway, the video that will be appearing on your screen now will be how I went about making the foliage on this section. And the bottom video, I think, will be about making the tarmac platforms. All right, speak to you soon. Take care of yourself.
Bye for now.